Before we begin this construction of the Mako, I'd like to make you aware that we designed this kit so that you could modify it. And there's two major modifications. So this is your stock Mako. And this one right here has been modified. And you can see the big change is right here in the middle. And this is where we added a dual deployment eBay. So this does not come with the kit, but you can add it. But you want to plan ahead for this modification because in the stock kit, the two tubes are glued together. In the modified kit, you have to keep them apart. The other modification that you can do is you can put a 38 millimeter motor mount in the back end rather than the 29 millimeter. And this will allow you to fly the rocket a lot higher and gives you more motor choices that you can use. So again, you need to decide if you wanna make that modification first because you do have to modify the instructions as well. You know, you're going to need a 38 millimeter motor mount tube, which you can get from Apogee Components and probably also some kind of engine retention system. Again, we do have those here at Apogee Components. So now that you know what mods you can do, let's go ahead and begin the construction of this rocket. Okay, in step number one, we're gonna install the weld nuts into the tube. And you can see where they're gonna be located. Now the one in the back is pretty easy to install. You just reach in on the inside and with your finger and you can put it in there. And these are glued in, so you're gonna use either medium or thick super glue. And here I've got some thick, and just put it around the perimeter on the weld nut, right like that, and stick it on the inside and hold it in place. And I like to take the rail buttons themselves and to put them on just to hold them in place. So while that glue is drying, so you'll put the screw in there and just screw it down. And it doesn't have to be tight. The whole purpose is to hold that weld nut there until that glue dries. Now the one in the middle is a little harder to get to. Some people have small hands and they can get them in the tube. That's not me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a wood dowel and just take a piece of masking tape, double itself up, and just stick it on the end like that. And then we're gonna put the weld nut right there, put our CA glue. And now we're gonna go on the inside and just pop it through like that. Keep holding it there until you can get this rail button on. Okay, and then once it's in, then just kind of peel it back and hopefully the tape comes with it. Okay, so that's step one. Step number two is to sand the forward and the aft internal edges of the main body tube, which is this. So on the inside right here, it usually has a little, a little burr and we're just gonna take some sandpaper and sand that down. We're gonna do both ends. Okay. Step three, uh, we're gonna take the motor mount tube and we're gonna mark it in two spots. First, it's going to be a quarter inch from one end and two and an eighth inch. So, so this will be the front end at one quarter inch and then two and one eighth inch from the other end. Okay, just like that and this will be the front end, so I'm gonna mark that as F for front. In step four, we're gonna take two of the centering rings, like here. Now your centering rings might be a little bit different. They might have a little perforated edge. Mine doesn't, but what we're gonna do is we're going to sand off like about that much of the edge of two of the rings. And the purpose of this is so that they can slide past the edge of that weld nut on the inside. We'll get some rough grit sandpaper, and we'll just sand these down, just a nice flat edge right here. Okay, just like that. And you might wanna check it, make sure that it will go past that weld nut on the inside so you can see that this one slides easily in. All right, that was step four. Use a round needle file in step five. So we're gonna take a needle file that looks like this and it's round. We're gonna take the remaining centering ring and we're going to file a half round notch like that. And the purpose of that is so that the shock cord can pass between the rings. So it doesn't have to be big. It just has to be, you know, about the diameter of the shock cord. So again, like before, we'll take that. And we'll just file a notch right there. You can see I'm kind of spinning as I'm going, trying to make that nice and round. 
Okay. That looks good. Okay, step six, use wood glue or five minute epoxy to install the ring that, with a flat, but without a notch. So that's one of these. So that the second pencil mark is on the aft side of the ring and measures two inch from the forward edge of the tube. I put that in the right spot. So this is the front, is this way, this is the back. So we wanna put it right up there so that this part right here measures two inches. So I'm gonna get some wood glue. I'll make sure that the line is on this side and also that it's nice and perpendicular to the tube. So I'm just gonna let that set for a couple of minutes while that dries a little bit. And then we'll go on to step seven. So I messed up, but it's fixable. In step three, where I was supposed to mark the tube, I was supposed to mark quarter inch from this end as well. There's no harm, no fall, because there's still plenty of time to mark it at one quarter of an inch. See, when I'm doing this, I don't have the benefit of the illustrations that you do. Okay, so there's my quarter inch mark. And then the other one was two inches. So from here to the edge of the tube is two inches, and that's good. All right, so now we're gonna take this ring and we're gonna take the shot cord. Step seven, we're gonna tie the shot cord to the front end of this tube. Okay, so then we're going to glue the small centering ring on the aft side of the pencil mark. So that's this centering ring right here and that's gonna get glued right there like that. Just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna route the shock cord through this ring with the notch that we had sanded. Okay, so then, gotta make sure that it goes in the notch. Route the shock cord, then glue, that's on the main ring, pull the shock cord tight. Well, this one doesn't have a flat, so this one needs a flat. It's much easier to put a flat on than to sand that little notch in there. Just like that. So now we need to align those flats like that so that it will sit flat like that. All right, and so this is gonna get glued up against that. So I'm gonna pull that off and put some glue here. And then I'm gonna pull this shot cord tight. So you'll notice that the shock cord goes over the top of the small ring and then through this other ring like that. And I'm going to let this glue dry and make sure my flats, it rotated around. And I'm gonna set that aside and let that dry and then I'm gonna come back and put fillets on everything so that's nice and strong. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, the last step on part nine is to put glue fillets here. And so I'll go ahead and do that. And then finally on this one right here, and I wanna put a good glue fillet on the outside where those two rings touch, and then apply it over the shock cord. Make sure that it's attached really good to the tube. Okay, so now in step 10, we're gonna take the shock cord, crumple it up like this, and we're gonna shove it in the tube just to get it out of the way. And you can take a piece of paper towel and shove it in on, on either end just to make sure it doesn't come out. All right, so I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll start putting it into this tube. So I'll be back. 